Buff Army, I'm going to answer one of your most common questions. And that's, Chef Buff, how did you increase your deadlift by over 140 pounds in the last 20-ish weeks? And honestly, guys, it's as simple as one, two, three, four. I'm going to go over what worked for me specifically. I'm not telling you to copy, you know, this advice. This applies to me, where I was, what my goals were. So without further ado, let's break down the most important areas. Wait a second. You deadlifted more weight than the oak? Arnold Schwarzenegger, I've quickly come to the conclusion that you're an alien. You must be. One, weak areas. This is by far the most important. You can start first with technique. Everyone's technique can be criticized and improved upon. This year when I looked at my form, I saw several areas I needed to improve upon. My starting position was too high, I was leaning forward as I was lifting, my uh, mid-back was rounding a little bit too much, a lot of different areas I had to improve upon. So I took a look at where my deadlift was failing, and where naturally is my body, where I was weak, and I decided to work them more. My two weak areas are the lower back and hamstrings. My glutes, you know, I got big ass, take over and do most of the work. So when it came to the lower back, what I did are several different exercises. A lot of them were specialty. The one which I have a video on, the good mornings, I started doing immediately. The erectus spinae, the muscle that goes from the lower lumbar, like a Christmas tree, all the way up to your neck, very important for keeping that back in that straight position. And if you strengthen it properly, not only will it assist in the deadlifts, but the squats and most major movements. So I put a great emphasis on training my lower back properly. That just doesn't, you know, I'm not just talking about back extensions, I'm talking about real compound movements. And then for the hamstrings, I once again, you know, the reverse hyper, the glute ham raise is great for that. The single leg curl, inverse curls, all these exercises are special and they work for me, which is why I'm not going to throw up links. I'm talking about what works for me. So I improved not only the strength of those weak areas, the lower back and hamstrings, but second and most importantly, I improved the mobility. I jazzercised the shit out of my hamstrings. Because the bottom position, I had a couple tight areas. Interestingly enough, my calves were pretty tight. Uh, my hamstrings, getting down to that bottom position with my hips, just felt tight, uncomfortable. I got serious about foam rolling. I wasn't just advocating it, now I was doing it. Uh, several times a day, as well as doing some mobility stretches. As you may know, I have an anterior pelvic tilt, which means I have to pay special attention to form and making sure certain areas are stretched out. So mobility, after I discovered how shit my form I felt looked, I really focused on mobility. Picking once again the lowest hanging fruit from that tree. By improving my mobility, it allows me to activate those weaker areas. Because remember, a tight muscle is usually a weaker inhibited muscle. So my lower back was tight, guess what? It also was weak. Same idea with my hamstrings. So these two really go hand in hand. Immediately, honestly, I think it was within... I think it was within eight weeks that my deadlift went from 400 pounds to about 465 just by improving this right here, focusing really here. The third area that honestly is important is programming. This is what separates the men from the boys. You know, guys that just go in and train a failure and never get results, and those that properly plan out the progressions. Right here, we're talking about something cool, you know, nonlinear periodization, undulating, you know, no big deal. What I'm talking about is accumulation and intensification. This really just means accumulation volume, doing more volume, right? So I have a phase. If I broke up the 20 weeks I did the last 20 weeks, I'd say 10 weeks were roughly accumulation, doing a whole lot of volume. So I deadlift twice a week. I do a whole lot of accessory movements for my weak areas, and I'd accumulate a lot of volume. The intensity was a little bit lower, so I wasn't shooting for one rep maxes. I was doing between, you know, three to eight reps. Then on the intensification phase, what that is, you lower the volume and then you increase the intensity. You start going you know, for singles, for triples, for doubles. There's always a relationship between intensity, how heavy you lift, and volume, right? Because you can't lift a heavy weight many times. You can lift a heavy weight a couple times or you can lift a moderate weight many times. This fundamental relationship is one of the keys for training in general. So I really manipulated my whole training schedule to make sure that when I deadlifted, it was the best time, the most optimal for me, and then I ripped it. Four, and honestly, most importantly, belief. Because I can give you all these tools right here, you know, fixing your weak links, improving mobility, great programming, but if you don't apply yourself 100%, it means jack shit. 
There's a difference between getting angry, which people are like, oh, I get angry and tack the weights. You know, an animal can get angry, but an animal can't instill belief in themselves. This is that fundamental, profound belief that you can achieve what you set out to do. So every single time being incredibly focused and I work out. If it says, you know, attempt 480 pounds, uh, you know, like I did back in, I think, July for two reps, and I never did that before in my programming, you gotta grip it and rip it, staying focused. Belief in yourself builds confidence, which will build results. I had my personal goals. A lot of people, when I first started, thought this was crazy to increase my deadlift by this much. You'll never crack 500 pounds. Well, I end up doing 545 pounds, and I'm not done. I'll be doing 600 pounds within the next year. It came from really sound programming. So analyzing the problem, oh, I got weak areas, tight mobility, and I got it structured well, and then putting it into action, developing that solid plan all based around belief and confidence in yourself. If you want a goal, you gotta go out and attack it. Buff Army, in this video I try to explain how I personally increase my deadlift. Take away from this video what you can and apply it to yourself. Thanks as always for watching my videos. Make sure to like, share with friends, and subscribe. I'll be seeing all you guys in the next video. Peace.